Hello there, YouTube. It was a typical comic book week this week, I guess it is now, with eight comics. Uh, what did I get? Six from my poll list and two extras. Um, yeah, I think that's about typical these days. Six on my poll list in one week is actually not a ton, but I found one number one and a sketch cover to get, or a blank cover to draw on. But here we go, this is the issue seven of seven, the last issue of the last broadcast. I can't wait to read this one, see how the story ends. I've really been enjoying this series. Um, picked it up, it was a completely unknown thing to me that I picked up the first issue of. Uh, I don't know what to call this style of art, manga grunge. Um, the story's been really interesting. All sorts of mystery and interpersonal conflicts and just fun stuff. I've enjoyed. And also, this all comic books should be made like this. I wish you could feel this cover. This is a thick cardstock and smooth and pleasant to the touch. I wish every comic book were as nicely made as this one, but they're not. But anyway, if you want an interesting read that's a little uh, out of the ordinary and offbeat, Let's see, who I don't even know who does this book. It's uh, Andre Sirangelo and Gabriel Umazark. Umazark. Hmm, good. I don't, don't know who either of those two are, but they made a really good comic book. Um, it's from Arakia. Uh, I'm sure they'll collect it at some point. Give it a read if you're looking for something different. Next, we have Dark Horse Presents. Semi, what does that say? Semi Auto Magic and Other Tales. Um, you either like anthologies or you don't, I notice. I like anthologies. A uh, collection of eight page stories. I don't know, what is this? 48, 48 pages. Uh, I, you know, you'll like some stories better than the others. That's the way anthologies are, but I'm okay with that. Uh, here's another one. Nice. This has got a much not as good to the touch as uh, last broadcast, but a nice thick, glossy cover. I think this one has some uh, Evan Dorkin in it. Is that this issue? All different. So, oh, nice, nice picture there. All sorts of different styles. I just follow Evan Dorkin's Tumblr, I think it is. Oh, there we go. And I think he mentioned he had some stuff in here. And I like his work. He does milk and cheese. I think he used to do Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure back in the 90s at Marvel. But a whole variety of stuff in Dark Horse Presents. If you're into anthologies, if you like a little of this and a little of that, this is the book for you. Now let's go with Deadly Class number nine. Um, what to say about this one that I haven't said before? It's excellent. Nice artwork, nice storytelling. And the, the one thing that surprises me the most about this book is that it's nothing like I thought it was going to be. In that, um, you know, it's one of the, the, the elevator pitch for this book, I guess, was... It's a high school for a secret high school for assassins. And to me, that would make me go, uh. But the whole assassin part really isn't played up, except for the fact that everybody's dangerous. It's really more like high school with deadlier people. So it's the interpersonal relationships and this lead guy's past. As he's a really messed up kid that really messed up things happened to. The old peekaboo bang. And um, he's just trying to make his way in this really messed up world, you know, being really messed up. <laughs> so it's interesting stuff. Uh, give Deadly Class a look. Here we go with, uh, this might be my Lone Valiant book. Uh, the other one I was reading got canceled. Um, but it's going to be brought back in some other form. And I think there's a couple other things I might pick up from Valiant this winter that are coming back. But um, I've been enjoying Exo Man of War now that um, the Armor Hunters story is over. We'll see what 
direction they take it in. Uh, I guess they're we're entering the Armorines, which are either a uh, aqua ballet team or armored marines. I'm not sure. What was that? A lion shrieking at him? Crazy. <laughs> Solid superhero sort of action with a little politics thrown in. Um, I enjoy EXO. I'll keep getting it. Here we go with Thief of Thieves, The Hit List, Part 6 of 6. It's number 25. I like that cover. Nice orange and black combo going on there. As they fight and dance and whatever else they're doing. Uh, last part of the story. There's some nice artwork to, to glance at. This has been a whole... Um, uh, whatever the heck that guy's name is. The, um... Darn it, I forget his name. Um, the Thief of Thieves. Uh, he's in the middle of a mob war who wants to kill one side and wants to kill his family. He wants to kill both sides and had some, um... Had some sort of little escapade going on to come out on top. And, uh, it's been a solid sort of crime story. This is this is more of a stylish crime story than a real life, you know, Ed Brubaker or David Lapham crime story. This is more of a Hollywood crime story. But uh I like a good Hollywood crime story. Thief of Thieves. That looks like a wing coming off her butt since the color is so similar. <laughs> anyway. And the last one from the poll list is Revival. Chapter 25. I guess it gives us a little CH there, so they're using chapters. Um, Wausau. That's the name of the town where all the people came back from the dead, where everything takes place, except for the last few issues in New York City. Oh, some crazy religious people have probably shown up. Because sane religious people aren't showing up to this place. Um, I've enjoyed Revival. Lots of slice of life stuff. Lots of horror noir stuff. We got some big city horror stuff for a uh, story arc. And I'm um, not sure where it's going to go next, but I'll see. And here is Synergy, issue number one, a new image number one. Shadow line, I guess. And you know what? This one didn't even particularly interest me. There were two image number ones out this week, and I was like, I gotta get one of them. <laughs> I can't pass up on both image number ones. And for some reason, this one struck me more than the other one. I have no idea what it's about. Let's see if we can figure it out. We, we got monsters. We got a masked girl with a hockey stick and a gun. Why you need a hockey stick when you got a gun, I'm not sure. But uh, uh, we got a guy in a green cap with stabby th what are <laughs> like knives stabbing something around are the knives stabbing the monster or are they just stabbing something random I'm not sure oh he's carrying a body that's what it is so we've got a guy carrying a body <laughs> man I didn't even look at this cover before I bought it uh, probably because it's so confusing but anyway, um, I had to give one of the image number ones a try, and this is the one that won out. And the final two things I got were this Wonder Woman 36 blank cover. I'm going to do some sort of drawing on it. I have no idea what. I've got a whole bunch of blank covers up there that I some I've drawn on, some I haven't. Um, matter of fact, I didn't even open my Captain America blank one from last. My comic shop gets these in every now and then. And their cover price, so I figure, what the heck, I may as well pick one up when I see them. And I actually, the F, I got one last week, the Cap, the new Captain America one, and this one, I think it's the first time in a couple months I've gotten blanks. Wonder why they hadn't gotten any in, or who, somebody else buy them, I have no idea. And this is the, I bought The Walking Dead last week, but if you remember, it was torn straight through at the spine about half an inch right over here so I brought it into the shop 
and they swapped it out for a new clean one without a giant tear in it, and they'll send that one back as damaged, because it was damaged. Uh, <laughs> and is this the, I don't even know, M. Finch and D. Finch? Is that the uh, new Wonder Woman team I've been hearing other people talk about, because I haven't read Wonder Woman since the early 80s? Gene uh, <laughs> Colan was the last Wonder Woman artist I read. Um, but hey, I'll have to give that one a look if I ever get the they I, I, I never tape my books down like that. I often will use like one of those, one of these, let me show you. I use these Avery coating labels. I usually just put one in the middle because they're very low tack. And you'll never get a tape pull with one of these. And if you keep messing with tape on the back of your books like this, eventually you'll get a tape pull on something. Sooner or later, it's inevitable. Matter of fact, I know a, uh, a friend of mine, I think it was last winter, told me, he Facebooked me, he was, practic he was like, oh my God, I'm practically in tears. Because he had, he as he called it, the sweetest copy of one of the Neil Adams X-Men. I forget which one, like X-Men 64 or something. I can't remember. And um, he just got it back from being autographed by Roy Thomas. And like I said, this this guy is a... He's been handling comic books his whole life. He's been handling tape his whole life. He knows how to do things. and But he uses tape on his bags. But, you know, like it's, it's never a problem until it's a problem. And he got a tape pull on this really sweet book, mint condition X -Men, Neil Adams X Men, which he had autographed by Neil and Roy Thomas. So he was like, "I can't believe I got a tape pull on this book." And I'm like, "Sooner or later, if you're taping your books, you're gonna get a tape pull. It's inevitable. So don't use tape." That's my uh, advice for the week, and I hope you guys have a good week.